Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to talk about English words that we stole from other languages. Now, maybe it's not nice to say that we stole them but I didn't know what other word to use. When you borrow something, if we, if I said we borrowed these words from another language, it would mean that we plan to give them back someday <laughs> but we're not planning to give these words back. I guess you could say these words are taken from other languages. Or these are words that came from or have their origin from other languages. So, I'll talk a little bit today about some words that are English words now but they came from other languages. Now, you might be surprised if you see a word that came from your language um, because we might spell it differently uh, and we might actually pronounce it differently. So, don't expect an English word that came from another language to necessarily be pronounced the way you pronounce it in your language. We tend to steal words from other languages and then in English, we pronounce them any way we feel like it. So, please don't be offended by that. Again, as I mentioned, some of the words might be spelled the same. They might be spelled slightly differently. They might be pronounced differently. In fact, I think most of them are and the first word comes from the Czech language and that word is robot. So, as you know, a robot is a machine that we build that usually can move by itself and think a little bit by itself. It usually has a computer inside that acts as the robot's brain. A robot is probably the machine that resembles closest the human form although not all robots need to look like humans. In factories, they sometimes have robots that don't look like humans but generally, a robot uh, will be something that can think a little bit on its own using a computer and it usually looks like a human in some way either like a human arm or maybe like a human body but sometimes in the case of robots like R2D2 in Star Wars, they have their own shape and form. Uh, the next word is mosquito. Uh, this is my least favorite insect in the world <laughs> although we do have a few fruit flies in our kitchen right now and those are really bugging me as well but a mosquito is a small insect that lands and then it bites you. I really hate getting mosquito bites. They're usually very itchy. Sometimes you get a little red bump when you get a mosquito bite um, but mosquitoes certainly are not very nice uh, and it comes from the Spanish language, mosquito. I think it means like small flying insect or small gnat. A gnat is another type of insect um, that bothers human beings. Um, I was gonna say one more thing. I hate it when I'm trying to sleep and I can hear a mosquito buzzing around my head. That is one of my least favorite things in the world uh, because you just know eventually it's going to bite you. Uh and then tsunami. Yeah, <laughs> bugging you. It's a bit of a pun there, eh? Mosquitoes bug you. But the word bug is the word we use to describe insects as well. So, um thanks, Brent, for recognizing the small pun that I made accidentally. Tsunami. So, this is from Japanese. This is from the Japanese language. A tsunami, of course, is a gigantic wave that comes in from the ocean and it kind of inundates a city that's on the coast. When something is inundated, it means it gets flooded with water. There have been a few large tsunamis. They are caused when there is an earthquake in the ocean and that earthquake causes a gigantic wave to travel for many, many kilometers across the ocean and when it finally hits the shore, it kind of goes right over top. I think I missed a super chat back from Lolly. Thanks, Lolly, for the super chat. She says, thanks, Dave and Todd and thanks, Bob. Thanks, Lolly, for that and then we have SEO Wu. Uh, saying I love your lesson. Thank you, Esio Wu, for that super sticker. That's awesome of you. Um so, tsunami, large wave, very, very destructive, very, very dangerous. The next word is lemon. So, this is a word that comes from Arabic. A lemon, of course, is a very, I would say, tart fruit. It's not a sweet fruit. It is from the citrus family and lemons are used in many, many recipes in North America and around the world. Sometimes people simply make lemonade out of it. Now, if you have lemonade in North America, it's a mixture of lemon juice and lots of sugar. Lemonade is very, very sweet in North America but lemon is also used um, when we eat fish. We'll put a little bit of lemon on top of the fish 
and many, many uh, recipes will call for lemon. When something is an ingredient in a recipe, we say the recipe calls for it. Um let's see here. I see a few people in the chat trying to guess all of the different languages the words will be from. You'll be surprised that many of them are from the French language. Not all of them. Maybe a quarter of the words today are from the French language. I think because uh England and France are so close to each other. Anonymous is from the Greek language. Anonymous simply means to do something without someone knowing who you are. The origins of the word mean something like without a name or an unknown name. So, if I do something anonymously, it means no one knows that I did it. If you go to um parts of your city where there's lots of graffiti where people take spray cans of paint and they spray paint on the walls, they usually do that anonymously. They do it at night. They do it in the dark. They do it at a time when no one can see them. So, they are somewhat anonymous. Sometimes someone will write a letter and they will sign the letter anonymous. Basically, meaning they didn't want to put their real name on it. So, they put the name anonymous on it. Loot is from Hindi. So, from India, we have this word loot. Um oftentimes when there are riots in large cities, people start to loot. When you loot a store, it means you smash in the windows. You smash in the doors and you start to steal things. There was a lot of looting this past year in a lot of different countries in the world because people have been protesting many, many things and a lot of times when there is a protest, it can bring a large crowd and the large crowd can become unruly. When something is unruly, it's hard to control and sometimes some bad people come to the protest but they have an ulterior motive. That means they have another reason for being there and that reason is to break into stores and to loot. Um now, loot can also be used as a noun. When you play a video game, sometimes you get lots of loot when you play the game, especially games where there's magic and stuff involved. Um but generally, as a verb, we say to loot. We say sometimes crowds get out of control and people start to loot stores. Cartoon is from Italian. Uh so, a cartoon obviously is a hand-drawn picture or series of pictures. Generally, in English, when we talk about cartoon, we are talking about something that's on the television. So, we often say, I'm gonna watch cartoons. My kids watch cartoons on Saturday morning sometimes. As opposed to in the newspaper, we read the comics, okay? So, comics are hand-drawn pictures in a newspaper or magazine or on the internet and where there's little speech bubbles. So, there's a little white box with the words in it. So, again, cartoon from the Italian language is something in English that we watch on TV. You'll watch a cartoon um but when you look at something in the paper, we would call it a comic or a comic strip. Kindergarten. So, this is from the German language and (laughs) we actually have kindergarten. It's a really funny word. I think the meaning of the word in German is something like garden for children. Um we don't say the T as a hard T. We see we say kindergarten. Okay. So, my kids went to kindergarten. Um I guess we sort of say the T. My kids went to kindergarten when they were five years old. In Canada, most kids go to kindergarten when they're five and they go to grade one or first grade when they are six. Um let's see here. I have to move a little more quickly than other days because I have a lot of slides today. Cookie. So, cookie apparently is from the Dutch language. So, from Holland or the Netherlands and it's from the word I think it's cookie. I can't even say it properly (laughs) but a cookie is of course a small what you might call a biscuit in other countries. But in North America, if you have a chocolate chip cookie, the only name we use for that is cookie. We just say it is a cookie. I'm going to eat a cookie. I eat too many cookies every day. Um my kids have started to bake cookies um and they bake cookies once or twice a week at night and then I just eat too many cookies because fresh baked cookies are super yummy. Karaoke. So, from the Japanese language, we have the word karaoke. Karaoke is when you go Uh, to a bar or another place and they have a karaoke machine. 
A karaoke machine is something that plays music but it also puts the words or lyrics up on the screen for you and then you can sing along. Here's a little fact about me. I should put this in another video at some point. I have never done karaoke. Uh I think I've shared with you before. I'm not a very good singer. I feel like I have some talents. Um singing is not one of them. When I sing um I can't sing on key. So, if I try to sing a C or a D, it doesn't I I can't sing on key and if someone tries to help me sing on key, it doesn't work. So, I have never done karaoke. I don't sing publicly very often but again, karaoke from the Japanese. Um a I, I you can d- go do karaoke. There's a karaoke machine. You can say, hey, do you guys wanna go to this bar and do karaoke tonight? Or you can sing karaoke. Oh, he's gonna sing a karaoke song. Um and we probably pronounce it wrong. Ketchup. So, I did not know this one. I actually looked uh, researched on three different websites to make sure but ketchup is originally from a Chinese word that also means a sauce that you put on food. It's not a direct uh, it's not directly stolen. It kind of came through the Portuguese as well through the Portuguese language um but ketchup is something that in Canada is made from tomatoes. It has vinegar and sugar in it and we put it on our french fries and our hamburgers. It's not the same sauce that the word originates from. That's a different sauce but the word ketchup has its origins in the Chinese language. We obviously spell it differently because we have a different alphabet and we obviously say it differently but the word ketchup is from the Chinese language. Uh utensil is from the French. So, this word isn't used everywhere in English speaking countries but when you talk about forks and spoons, some people call it cutlery. Some people call them utensils. We say utensils in Canada, okay? So, we have a lot. We have a utensil drawer and in that drawer in our kitchen, we have forks and knives and spoons and it comes from the French. I guess it would be pronounced like utensile, something like that, a little differently. Catalog is from the French. Now, we don't have a lot of catalogs anymore. Catalogs were something that um was very popular when I was a kid and it was very popular up until a few years ago. A catalog is um something that a store makes that has all of their products inside and you can kind of leaf through the catalog to see what you want to buy. Um the catalog has very much been replaced by the internet. Most stores don't send out a catalog. When I was a kid, the store that was called Sears would send out something called the Christmas wish book and it was a catalog that had all the Christmas toys in it and as a kid, I would look through that book and just look at all the stuff that I really wanted for Christmas. So, catalog from the French. Um it means a um basically a book that a store puts out that lists all the things that they sell. Massage. Now, this word, there were a lot of origins. It said massage was from the French language, the Spanish language, the Italian language, the Portuguese language um but I put French but I think massage is probably one of those Latin based words that's in almost every Latin based language. So, massage when you are feeling tense, when your back or neck is really stiff, sometimes you go for a massage. Um I don't regularly get massages. <laughs> in Canada, there's something called massage therapy. Sometimes when you injure yourself at work, then after you are starting to feel better, you still might not feel great. So, you might go for massage therapy. So, that's where someone, a professional will kind of make it so that you are more relaxed by uh, manipulating and pushing the muscles in your body around. Cafe or cafe is from the French as well. So, in English, if you want to have a cup of coffee with a friend, you can go to a cafe. Now, you'll notice that I spelled it two different ways. In English, we tend to leave the accent off the E but in Canada, you will most likely see the accent on the E, okay? So, um it depends where you go but if you were visiting a friend and you said, hey, um I could really use a cup of coffee, your friend might say, oh, there's a nice cafe down the street. Let's go get one. So, a cafe is a place. It is a small restaurant generally one that will sell coffee and tea and other hot drinks 
and usually other small baked goods as well. You could go to a cafe to have a coffee um and to have a cookie. There that's a lot of C words. You could go to a cafe to have a coffee and a cookie. There you go. Uh let's see here. Genre. So, this is also from the French. Genre is used to talk about the different types of movies or the different types of books that you can read. So, the genre I like to read. I like to read science fiction books and I like to watch science fiction movies. There are a lot of different genres. There are horror movies. There are romantic comedies. There are dramas. Uh we also say drama by the way. Um so, a genre is kind of a category that you will find when you're talking about things like books and movies. Just looking over to see where I'm at. Need to keep moving here. Patio. So, outside of this door, you can't see the door, can you? But right outside of here, there is a small patio beside my house. A patio is a place outside where you have some outdoor furniture where you sit during the nicer times of the year. Um a patio is usually made out of stone or brick. Um it's not made out of wood. In Canada, if you go outside and you sit on something that's made of wood, we call it a deck. But a patio is usually at ground level and it's usually made of you know large stones or bricks. So, a patio from the Spanish language means an outdoor place to sit. Um we don't sit on our patios in the winter in Canada. (laughs) Macho. So, when you describe someone as being macho, it means they are very very manly. Um I chose this guy because he's wearing a suit jacket. He has a nice watch on. Uh he has facial hair. He's he looks very macho to me. Um lately though, this isn't always a positive word. Sometimes when you say someone is macho, um you might say that he's too masculine. You might say that you might use it in a negative tone. So, you could say, oh, he's a, he's just really macho. But if you say, ah, oh, that guy's really macho, you might be saying that he's too manly. Um we live in a world now where people would like everyone to be a little more equal. And so, sometimes when you use words like macho, it's a little too extreme from the Spanish though. Plaza or plaza. Interesting, isn't it? We have two pronunciations of this word. In North America, a plaza is usually used to talk about a shopping mall like the one in the first picture up here. So, often there are shopping plazas, okay? So, you might go to the plaza to buy some things. You might go to the shopping plaza to buy things. We also sometimes say plaza. Notice how I pronounced it a little differently and that would be something more like I think the original meaning of the Spanish word. A large outdoor area in a small town or city. So, there's no wrong way to say this. You could say I'm gonna go have coffee. I'm gonna go shopping at the plaza or I'm gonna go shopping at the plaza. You could also say I'm gonna meet my friend at the plaza downtown for a cup of coffee in a cafe. Sorry, sometimes we borrow words and then we pronounce them weird (laughs) and uh, we just make up a pronunciation. So, um gung ho from the Chinese. When you in English say that you are gung ho about something, it means you are excited about it. You wanna do it. Uh you can't wait to get started. Every morning when I get up on a Friday, I'm gung ho to do this English lesson. It's a lot of fun for me to do this English lesson. So, I'm quite gung ho. So, again, it means to be excited, to be happy, to look forward to doing something. You can see this guy is very gung ho right now. He looks excited and happy to get started. <laughs> in the chat, Andre says, that guy in the picture isn't so macho, Bob. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. <laughs> yeah, there are many interpretations of macho, aren't there? Uh moped. So, a moped is kind of a cross between a motorcycle and a bicycle. So, it is a two-wheeled vehicle that has a motor but it also has pedals. So, we call it a moped. It's from the Swedish uh language. Um a moped is not a very common thing to see in Canada. I think because our country is very large, you tend to see cars and motorcycles and trucks. We don't see a lot of mopeds. In our cities, people sometimes drive scooters. A scooter is similar to a moped but it doesn't always have pedals. 
but more and more people are riding electric bikes. I think that is what is replacing the moped right now. Um my friend stops by sometimes on a Sunday and he has an electric bike. So, it has an electric motor and it has pedals as well. Um let me see here. Paparazzi. So, this word is from the Italian language and paparazzi are the people with cameras that try to take pictures of celebrities and famous people. So, they will wait outside of that person's house and when they come out, you'll just hear a whole bunch of cameras taking pictures like bazoom, bazoom, bazoom. That's my camera. That's the sound cameras make in my mind. Bazoom, bazoom, bazoom. You'll just hear 50 or 100 cameras going off. Paparazzi sometimes follow celebrities. When they go out, they'll follow them and then when they go to a restaurant, they'll try to take pictures of them when they enter the restaurant. So, paparazzi from the Italian language. Klutz is from the Yiddish language. Um by the way, Yiddish is a language that some Jewish people speak or used to speak and it's originally from I think high German. So, I think Yiddish and a form of German are somewhat similar. Uh a klutz is someone who uh, does things um that are klutzy. So, I guess we use that word as well. If I drop my phone all the time, you would say that I'm a klutz um or that I'm klutzy. Um if you are always um you know backing into things with your car by accident, we would say that you're a klutz. So, if you constantly make small mistakes, um sometimes when I'm working in the kitchen, I'll drop things and if I drop things more than once, I might say, oh, I'm just a klutz today. So, it means that you're just having trouble living life properly and you're constantly dropping things. Entrepreneur. So, this word obviously when we pronounce it in English, we say entrepreneur. Uh in French, you would say entrepreneur. It's a little hard for me to say. Too many R's from all of you French people. But an entrepreneur is someone who starts their own business. There are many young entrepreneurs in the tech world. In the world of technology, there are many entrepreneurs. People have an idea and they think to themselves, um oh, I'm going to start a business based on this idea. They would be an entrepreneur. Um there are many entrepreneurs under the age of 30 um who work in the tech world. It's just a great place to be an entrepreneur but There are also entrepreneurs in other areas. When Jen started her flower farm, you would say she was an entrepreneur. She had an idea to grow flowers and to sell flowers and so she started a business. Vigilante from Spanish. I put a picture of Batman here because a vigilante is someone who takes the law into their own hands. Let me explain explain that phrase a little bit. When there is a crime, you call the police and the police try to solve the crime but sometimes when there is a crime, people take the law into their own hands. They try to capture or hurt or injure the person who committed the crime themselves. We would say that that we would describe them as being vigilantes. A vigilante is someone who is not a police officer who tries to solve a crime or tries to punish the person who committed the crime without really having the legal right to do so. Sometimes, there will be shootings in a city and it will be because there is a vigilante. Someone who wants to take justice into their own hands. Sofa, my research showed was from the Turkish language. So, a sofa is a couch, a small place to sit when you're tired at the end of the day. If the sofa is big enough, you can lay down on it. Um I'm sure there are many other languages that have very similar words to it but my research showed that sofa was a Turkish word. So, again in English, we use the word couch and we use the word sofa to refer to the same piece of furniture. The common word is couch. Most people will use the word couch. Some people will use the word sofa. If you use the word sofa, people will not think that's funny. They'll think that's normal. Um we have a sofa in one room and we have a couch in another room and we use both words but couch is probably more popular. From the German, we have the word angst. This is a hard word for people who are learning English to pronounce. Angst is a feeling you have of fear or nervousness or stress about something. When you're feeling a lot of angst, you're definitely not happy. When you're feeling angst, you're 
uptight would be another word. Um I think people are experiencing a lot of angst due to the pandemic right now. Um you can experience angst um before a test for instance. Another German word is the word diesel. Um there are two types of engines in the world that run on petroleum based products. We have the gasoline engine and the diesel engine. The gasoline engine uses gas or petrol if you live in Britain. Um and then there is another type of engine called a diesel engine. Diesel engines are found in cars but usually they're more likely to be found in trucks and tractors. When you need a lot of power and you need a lot of um Yeah, when you need a lot of torque or power. Sorry, torque is probably a new word for you. You generally will want a diesel engine instead of a gasoline engine. It just works better. Um let me just check where I'm at. Mammoth. So, this word had several origins. I think it had Dutch origins but most of them traced back to a ger- or a Russian word for large hairy beast. So, this is a woolly mammoth. I think there is a Russian word mammot. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. We use the word mammoth to talk about anything that's really really big. You could say oh there was just this mammoth wave in the ocean or oh, wow that's just a mammoth built. Like mammoth just means extremely big. So, when you say gigantic, humongous, mammoth, they all refer to things that are very very large. So, some of my Russian friends who are here can tell me Not sure if Natalia illusion is still here. Um whether mammoth is related to a Russian word. My research said that it was. Boycott is from the Irish uh language and it actually is I'm pretty sure the last name of a person. Um the meaning in English to boycott means to not buy products from that company or to avoid something. So, when you boycott a company You tell everyone to stop buying their products. There was a very famous ketchup company that used to make ketchup in Canada and then they closed all of the factories and moved them out of Canada and people wanted to boycott that ketchup company and they told everyone to stop buying ketchup from them because they weren't making it in Canada anymore. So, when you boycott it means you stop purchasing products from that place. Glitch is from Yiddish. Although I put a question mark there because there were several different origins. But when you have a glitch, it's usually with a technological device and it usually means it isn't working right. Sometimes my phone will glitch. It'll just have a glitch and then I have to restart my phone. I'll tap and I can't open the app because there's some kind of weird glitch. And so then I'll turn my phone off and start it up again and then usually it works. So, let's see here. I'm just checking the chat for mammoth to see if anyone responded. So, I don't see any responses. Julia says mammoth is Russian? Question mark. So, you should check that one because you know it's always possible that I'm wrong. You never know. Kudos from the Greek. In English, when someone does a good job, we say kudos. So, we'll say things like, oh, kudos on that speech you made yesterday or kudos on that job that you did. It's really well done. When someone does something well, we say kudos to them. Um let's see. Yelena says, I'm afraid I've never heard a word mammoth in Russian. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong on that one. You know, I did all my research but that was one where I only found one source and it said it might be Dutch, might be Russian. So, I went with Russian. So, maybe I'm wrong. Kudos from the Greek though. I'm pretty sure about that one. It means job well done. Um brunette is a French word. In English, we use the word brunette to refer usually to a woman who has brown hair. I don't think I've ever heard a man with brown hair referred to as a brunette. Um generally brunette, I think 90% of the time, you'll be talking about a woman who has brown hair. So, you'll say, Oh yeah, my friend, my friend's a brunette. If someone says, oh, what color's her hair? Oh, she's a brunette. She's a blonde. She's a brunette, etc. Um souvenir from the French. So, means something a little different though. In French, souvenir means to remember. In English, souvenir means something you buy so you can remember something. When you go on a trip to an English speaking country, there will be souvenir shops. 
in a souvenir shop, you can buy things like keychains and mugs and t-shirts and they usually have the name of the place on them. So, when you go to Niagara Falls, you can go to a souvenir shop and you can buy a t-shirt that says Niagara Falls, Canada and we would say that that is a souvenir. People buy all kinds of little things as souvenirs in uh in Niagara Falls. By the way, again, in English, souvenir is a noun and it means a thing you buy to help you remember a trip that you went on or something that you did. Zero is from Arabic. Apparently, in the mathematical world, if you go back hundreds of years or maybe thousands, I don't know a lot about history or math. They the concept of zero was a new thing. The concept of a number that had no actual amount value was a new thing and so, we have the number zero um, which means that you have none. So, the concept of having nothing <laughs> from the Arabic. Alcohol also Arabic. Uh alcohol referring to any drink that has alcohol in it. So, generally, when we talk about alcohol in English, we're referring to what's considered hard liquor. Um things like vodka, things like whiskey, things like rye or bourbon or scotch. We call that alcohol. When you have beer or wine, it does have alcohol in it as well but generally, the word alcohol is used to refer to the stronger drinks and then also to refer to the amount of alcohol in other drinks. Boss from the Dutch. I'm not 100% sure this is Dutch but it made me laugh because Dutch people tend to be quite bossy. Sorry, if you're Dutch. I'm Dutch too or I was. My parents were. I I hope I'm allowed to say that but I thought it funny that the word boss might be of Dutch origin. That 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 kind of cracked me up. When something cracks you up in English, it means that it makes you laugh. Uh and then shampoo. So, shampoo is what you use to wash your hair. Uh this is a Hindi word. Um we buy all kinds of different shampoos. Sometimes people buy shampoo based on how well it works or how it makes their hair feel. Sometimes people buy a certain shampoo because they like the way it smells um but definitely uh in North America for sure and I think in most places in the world, if you look in someone's shower, there will be a bottle of shampoo there. Shampoo almost always comes in a bottle. So, we have a bottle of shampoo in our shower. We have a bottle of shampoo in our tub and uh, it's what you use to wash your hair. Coffee. Uh so, coffee uh was the word that was the hardest to track down and I'm not even sure that these answers are all correct. The origin of the word coffee can be traced to the Dutch language, the Turkish language. It can be traced to Arabic. It can be traced to German. There's just many, many origins of this word. So, don't take my word for it when I put Dutch, Turkish and Arabic. There are many origins of the word Dutch or sorry, the word coffee. Probably because coffee has been around for a very, very long time and probably because many cultures drink coffee. Um so, it's probably hard to track down the source of the word um but that was what my research showed. And then tea. My research showed that it was originally from a Chinese word uh from the word cha or chai which sounds kind of like tea. There were overtones of some European languages because there was trade between China and many European countries and so, it's probably a word that sounds way different in Chinese but eventually, every European language had some variation of the word tea to refer to the drink that you see there. In French, we say te. In English, we say tea. There are many variations of this word. So, I think because tea originally came from that part of the world, we've probably created a number of variations of the sound of that word for sure. 